there was a, a line that I can still remember that I thought was chilling when I was a kid, and it was biblical. Bring them out so that we may know them. And depending on your translation, you may have a few words here or there that differ, but the idea that you, you're going to force people to do these things, that's the part. Again, Americans don't care what you do in your personal life as long as you're not harming any children, you know, and that you're, you know, that the other person involved is consenting. They don't have a problem with that. They have a problem with the thuggery that is going on from these politically correct lefties, and they want it to stop. It's 934. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310. KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Telephone. Number to reach the program, 736-0300. That's 736-0300. And caller, you're on the air on KLIX. Go ahead. Good morning, Bill. This is Pat. Yes, sir. I just wanted to congratulate you on your article you had in the paper. I, I enjoy your articles when you put them in there. You give, you give uh, uh, what I'm going to say, how do I say it? Anyway, you give credibility to the newspaper when you put your articles in there. Well, you know the liberals. The liberals don't like it. They're now badgering the paper to uh, to get rid of me because they they're worried well, somebody out there might see it and agree with it. Well, I just that's I, I hate to tell them this, but there's a lot more of us than there is of them in this valley. <laughs> well, thank you. I thank you much. It's uh, it's been a labor of love to get that that well, opportunity. I'm, I'm really impressed at how well you. Uh, handle the English language. I just, it just, it just really amazes me that that uh, you write so well. So just keep it up. Hey, thank you, Pat, for the call. Good hearing from you. Yeah, the the angry liberals are writing the letter saying you you fire him, you get rid of him now. I don't like him, and 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 I don't want anybody else to like him, and I don't think anybody should be reading him. Dude, take a chill pill. If you don't like it, don't read it. Just like if you don't like what's on the radio, no one is twisting your arm, pushing you down to the ground, making you say uncle and telling you you're going to listen. Liberals out there would like to quiet and, and silence everyone they disagree with, not just because they don't like it, but they want to ensure that you don't hear it. They're that afraid that you might look at it and say, yeah, that's right. They don't want you seeing that because they... They believe somehow. I've had liberals who think that they're going to barge in here. Well, if I was doing that show, I would tell the people how it really is. If, if somehow they're going to come in here and they're going to start just prattling on with all of their uh, their liberal views and the other degenerate behaviors that they engage in, you're going to go, gee willikers, I never thought of it that way. I guess I'm a liberal now. But see, they, they, they figure because they had that monopoly on media for decades that if they can just get that restored, they can tell you how to vote, they can tell you what you need to think, tell you how to live. Uh, it just it, And again, I go back to this. It's the totalitarian. There's a, a Robespierre itching to get out of every, every liberal who wants to come. If you don't follow their rules, chop your head off at the guillotine. 937, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Raul Labrador mentioned in the first hour of the program one of the main goals of Congress. I hear the word Im- words immigration reform, and what does that mean? Well, to a liberal, it means open the borders. But to the conservatives in this country and some decent people who may be listening to this program, it means we've got to stop that. We, we, we've got to, uh, there's, you don't have a country if you can't secure your borders. Meanwhile, uh, the leader of the Roman Catholic Church, Pope Francis, speaking to the media, is instructing his bishops to treat immigrants to the United States well. I was impressed by the vitality and diversity of the Catholic community. Throughout the history, the Church in your country has welcomed and integrated new waves of immigrants. Now, I wonder how many uh, immigrants they're allowing to scale the walls at the Vatican. It has walls. Did you know that? Yeah, it does. Big, high walls. And how many is he welcoming in to use his kitchen? Because he's in a tiny, cramped apartment to show he's a man of the people. Oh, excuse me. They're not doing any of those things, are they? On the other hand, I don't want to criticize him too deeply. Catholic is a word that means universal. It is not the United States Church. 
just as any other church out there does not necessarily represent the United States or any other government on this planet. All of these churches are universal. And if someone does show up at your service, you minister to them. If someone does show up at the back door of the church and is hungry, you feed them. I understand all of that, and I'm not opposed to doing any of that. I, I, but the fact of the matter is these people keep saying, yeah, but the history of your country is to open its gates and let people in. Well, you know what? I went to a restaurant a couple of weeks ago, and it says maximum occupancy 175. Well, I'm not going to let 1750 in because the fire marshal says that's a hazard. The floor could collapse. The walls could pop out. If there's a fire, hundreds of people would die. There's a reason that you have those rules and regulations. And it would be nice if people started to respect that and realize it's the same way with a country as it is with a restaurant or your home. Bill Colley with you this morning on Top Story. On News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. 36. Got more coming up on this very subject in just a few minutes. You're listening to News Radio 1310, KLIX, and I've got to emphasize our website is one way to listen online, but soon we may be we may have an app available and you can listen anywhere on your smartphone. If you were with us in hour number one, I mentioned this and I'd like to mention it again. Uh, The police in Boise have identified both the police officers who were wounded, one of them very badly, in a shootout last weekend with a thug, uh, luckily who is no longer going to terrorize anybody else forever because, well, corpse is going to be rotting away in a potter's field somewhere. This was after he shot several other people and also shot a police dog, carjacked an 89-year-old woman, stole her car, stole her money. And he's gone. Uh, He is now uh, serving his master somewhere in the center of the earth. But uh, the two officers now, both of them have been identified. Corporal Kevin Holtry, he's a 17-year veteran of the Boise Police Department. He was hit multiple times in the shootout. And he has been in critical condition, but he is making daily progress. Corporal Chris Davis is doing much better, was also hit. And, of course, we, uh, we mentioned the other day that the police dog, if you were listening to AMI to how the police dog that was hit also had to have a blood transfusion uh, in order to uh, to survive what had happened. But the police in Boise are asking that if you'd like, because school children have been asking, but also members of the public in general too, to send get well cards to the officers as well as greetings to their families as we approach uh, the Christmas holiday coming up in just a few weeks. This would help them, I think, immensely to know that people do care about them in this community, this community we call Idaho. You can also, if you want to get a card to them, you can drop those cards off, though, with Idaho State Police. Idaho State Police will ensure. So if you drop by one of the local barracks of Idaho State Police, drop off the cards, they will then ensure that they get those cards to Boise and that those cards will then be distributed by the Boise Police Department to the two officers and their families. So I I wanted to pass that along this morning, if we could. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310. KLIX and News Radio 1310.com, 37 and 945. I also wanted to mention my good friends at Waddell and Reed, who, well, gosh, they know money, and they're also, uh, they're also helping me keep the lights on here at the radio station. They've been helping people plan for their futures for 80 years now. 79 by a few weeks, it'll be 80. I'll put it that way. It's one of the oldest firms in the country to offer mutual funds and a rare firm that offers two different mutual funds. That's to give you some choice because at Waddell and Reed, they know that not every investor is the same because we all have different needs and we all have different goals, things that we'd like to do when we're no longer working. So what they're going to do is work with you and, and craft a unique and individual plan. And they do not gamble your money away. They, they do their best to ensure that your money is invested conservatively so it's not going to go to any get-rich-quick schemes that may boomerang. They also would like to help you manage you know, your money, not only for those, those instances, but as well you have younger family members. You've got to look out for them, too. They'll help in that situation. They take planning personally at Waddell and Reed. I wanted to mention, too, coming up tomorrow on air with us, um, and I'm drawing a blank now. Kelton Hatch. He's not going to like it if I said I drew a blank. Kelton Hatch for Idaho Fish and Game. Now, Kelton loves Thanksgiving, and Thanksgiving is next week because 
on his Thanksgiving table. He has a lot of wild game. And we'll talk, uh, we'll talk a little bit about some of the updates tomorrow from Idaho Fish and Game. And then on Friday, the gun guys are here. And uh, we'll be talking about firearms issues. So that's, what, that's what's ahead for the remainder of the week here at News Radio 1310 KLIX and uh, uh, NewsRadio1310.com. And then next week, I believe it's Tuesday morning, I love the people from Victory Home uh, Restoration here in Twin Falls. Every year they sell Christmas trees. Now, the Christmas tree sale actually helps fund programs. It's essentially a rescue mission. It rescues souls, lost souls, and, and brings them back. And they have a, the, that sale coming up, but they also they work hard to provide people with a decent holiday who might not otherwise have it. So they'll be in the studio with us Tuesday morning next week, and they'll share with you how you can help out with all of that. I've got a couple of other quick things I wanted to mention. I referenced uh, illegal immigration earlier, and one of the huge problems this country has would be the sanctuary cities, many of which are now saying they're going to defy President Trump when he tries to crack down on the people here illegally. That is breaking the law. In New York City, Bill de Blasio, the communist mayor of that community, says he is going to destroy the records of these people so we will never know if they're here illegally or or, or legally. Of course, he wants their votes, so he figures that's one way to get that. Uh, He's in trouble, obviously, because some of his positions, and he's not going to be elected likely to another term unless he can figure out a way to game the system. And then you've got Rahm Emanuel in Chicago who thinks this is going to lead him onto something larger with his political aspirations. Uh, This is after, of course, he's had, uh, what, 3,000 murders in his city already this year? Yeah, he's not going anywhere. Over at, uh, actually, I mentioned the Daily Signal earlier, which is a great source for these things on a daily basis. The writer says proponents of stronger immigration enforcement said legislation specific to one form of grants Funding for the Department of Justice could be easier to implement. So in other words, they can do their best to defy President Trump when he takes office. But there are going to be various grant monies that go to these cities that can be stopped. And then, just like the Obama White House tried to intimidate uh, cities in North Carolina after North Carolina said they weren't going to allow burly brutes to come into little girls' rooms and pee next to them. Well, they're going to turn it around and use many of these things in a similar fashion against these cities that are harboring criminals. And here's a quote. If these sanctuaries want to cling to their policies, the federal government ought to sue them for obstruction, said Jessica Vaughn, director of policy studies for the Center for Immigration Studies, in an interview with the Daily Signal. Critics of the program said it violated immigrants' civil rights. Well, immigrants or illegal immigrants? What civil rights do illegal immigrants have if they're not necessarily American citizens? And the writer says, and did not differentiate between low-level and serious offenses. You know, if a guy here is is just stealing apples from the uh, the corner fruit stand, that's a crime. If a guy here, first of all, he committed a crime coming here illegally. But the difference between stealing an apple and, and killing your neighbor, I understand, is quite severe. But a crime is still a crime, and if you get picked up for it, you know, there's a there's a one-way ticket back home. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. And you're on the air. Go ahead. Uh, Bill, you know, the whole situation is when you're talking about the immigrants that are coming in this country, almost 100% of them are, are Muslims. And there's a real problem with that because those that do follow the Koran— they're commanded uh, to kill infidels or those that don't believe. And this is why the election here, just the closest race in the Magic Valley was for the CSI trustee. And, you know, a lot of people are very concerned about this. And uh, with these people here, and uh, Islam has had a war against the world for over 1,400 years. It was Jefferson that sent the Navy out, which became the Leatherneck Marines, to Tripoli to stop their uh, embezzlement or of uh, our ships, and we had to pay money to get our shipping through, and he stopped that. But the war has not con- – it's, it's a worldwide war, and most, a lot of Christians, not most maybe, are very naive about this. 
They think we've got to be benevolent. You know, immigrants in the past, my grandfather came through Ellis Island in 1903. He didn't speak a word of English, but he learned English, became a citizen, raised a fine family, and became an outstanding citizen in his community. But I can guarantee a lot of the, these people do not want to assimilate. That's the whole problem. Did you read what happened in Germany? They just raided a mosque, and they made a n numerous arrests because the mosque was not only preaching about killing Germans, but they would like to destroy the German constitution. Why do they want to get rid of the German constitution, which is, allows them to come in there and get great benefits, because they'd like to replace it with Sharia law? Well, the, the same thing is already happening here in this country, as you well know, Bill. Uh, Irving, Texas, uh, Dearborn, Michigan— uh, we have areas in the in, in right here in the Twin Falls area where uh, the home ownership or people that reside there is up to about a quarter of the residents in certain neighborhoods already with what's already here. And so pretty soon they'll be demanding their own Sharia law right here in the Magic Valley, right here in Twin Falls. So, folks, it's time to wake up, smell the coffee, and take a stand and stop this nonsense of bringing in these potential killers. Thank you much for the call. And, and to follow up on that, Nigel Farage, a uh, member of the European Parliament from Great Britain and the man who was really behind the, the Brexit movement, Nigel Farage speaking last night with Sean Hannity on the Fox News Channel, addressing some of these issues. And he doesn't believe Donald Trump should ever let his, his feet, uh, his foot off the gas when it comes to his, his plans to have a moratorium on Islamic immigration. What have we seen? Uh, not just a rise of radical groups, uh, the likes of which the German police are trying their best to hunt down today, uh, but also we saw those scenes, remember, on New Year's Eve at Cologne train station. The mass, open, sexual violation of women going on in a Western German city. Now, I'm not saying that because I want to demonise anybody, but I am saying this. Uh, what's happened from many of these Middle Eastern countries is the spread of ISIS. I feel uh, that we ourselves may be partly responsible for causing it by toppling uh, Saddam, by getting rid of Gaddafi, but whatever, the fact is, it's there. And remember that in these countries, women are at very best second-class citizens. So at best, we're bringing in a problem, a cultural problem, that is going to be very difficult to assimilate and maintain our values, mm -hmm. and at worst, we're bringing in people who actually want to kill us. And in another aspect of this, if you're in, in England, they have very strict gun control measures. Actually, throughout, throughout what they consider to be more civilized Europe, they think that we're all a group of barbarians. But this is all the more reason, because you never know, and your government can't protect you on every street corner. All the more reason to arm yourself, just for self-defense, so that if you're ever put in a situation where someone is threatening you, I love this story. This is a reporter by the name of Tom Rigotti, and he's talking about what happened at a Pennsylvania pizza parlor. Take a listen to this for a moment. Police in Levittown, about 25 miles northeast of Philadelphia, say it all happened when two armed men walked into Porfirio's Pizza and Pasta late last night. They pistol whipped the only customer in the shop, but police say the customer had a gun of his own. He pulled it out and shot both robbers, killing one and injuring the other. His condition is unknown. By the way, police say the customer's gun was properly registered. Tom Rigotti, Fox News. I guess that's important in liberal Pennsylvania, properly registered. You know, they're not telling us in this country. For instance, this guy who shot the two police officers in Boise last week after shooting some other people and doing the carjackings and the like. When I read the name, I'm always suspicious. Is that individual here illegally? We don't know that yet. I don't think anybody's asked the question, and mainstream media would likely not like to ask the question. Number two, we have so many of these, I've been looking at all of these people marching in the streets against Trump, who look to be, how shall we put it, like they could be here or they could be part of some of these movements. And again, we've got to find out if these movements are being infiltrated by people who are here illegally or people here who have, uh, who have a, a tendency to believe that someday we should be living under Sharia or that we should be paying out reparations. Any number of these things have to be addressed. You've got to maintain, though, your own security. Your first line of defense is obviously yourself. 
And you've got to be prepared and, and ready to do that. And obviously, Friday, we'll be talking more about some of these defense issues during our gun segment after the 9 o'clock news. So hopefully you can join us. And then the story out of Florida yesterday where a fellow was wailing on a police officer and a concerned citizen who was armed ended the situation. By the way, the, uh, the man who was wailing on the cop is dead. And now his sister says, but my brother didn't get a chance to shoot back. Well... He shouldn't be willing on a cop then, should he? Yeah, but now that he can't theft any longer, how are we going to make a living? It's racism, I tell you. It's racism. Bill Colley saying have a great day. God willing, if the creek don't rise, they'll allow me to come back here and do this all over again tomorrow. In the meantime, Rush Limbaugh is up next on News Radio 1310 KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com. Just after the 10 o'clock news from Fox, Sean Hannity following 1 o'clock news today, Glenn Beck after 4 o'clock news, and Dave Ramsey from 7 o'clock tonight. I hope that you all have a great day, and uh, I hope you all uh, learn something maybe today. Maybe some of those angry liberals out there are finally hearing actually what they need to hear, and maybe someday they'll stop telling people to tune out or not to, uh, not to read it or listen to it. And maybe they'll turn into people who are going to preach the gospel of how we can all be better Americans.